The number of asteroids varies with increasing distance from the Sun. And this is what is shown on this plot here. So on the x-axis, there is a distance from the Sun in astronomical units. And on the y-axis is the number of asteroids from a subset of all the available orbital asteroid data. And then we see a number of peaks and gaps along the x-axis. So here's a, a peak with lots of asteroids at almost two astronomical units, and another one here at around five astronomical units, which is where Jupiter is. And then there are a number of larger peaks and smaller ones in between. And then importantly, there are these gaps. Now these gaps are not at some random distances from the Sun, but at what we call um, resonances. For example, here, 1 over 2. And this means that Jupiter orbits the Sun once, and the asteroid, in the same time, orbits the Sun twice. And this is then a 1 to 2 resonance. And you can see there are a number of other resonances, like 1 to 3, so Jupiter orbits once, the asteroid three times, or sometimes also something like 2 to 3, so Jupiter two times, asteroid three times, and so on. Now, what does this mean? And this is uh, something I'd like to illustrate here. Um, now, if the Sun is in the center here, and then here is an asteroid, and over here is Jupiter. Now, the asteroid orbits the Earth at the Sun twice. And at the same time, Jupiter orbits the Sun once and then they meet at exactly the same point. Now the gravitational pull of Jupiter um, moves the asteroid a little bit outwards. And then starts over the asteroid in new orbit, orbits the Sun twice, and Jupiter at the same time in its same orbit, because it's very large compared to the asteroid, orbits the Sun once. So they meet again at the same point, and the asteroid moves out a little bit further. And then all this happens the next time, two times, and Jupiter once, they meet again, and the asteroid is pulled out a little further. So what um, the result is, is that the asteroid initially was here, and over time moved out here. So this orbit here, so if this is something like, a, if this is the one to two resonance here, um, is, is emptied by this process, by the gravitational pull of Jupiter every um, every um, every orbit, it is emptied. And this is what we see here in these Kirkwood gaps, that there initially there was this, um, the asteroids in this 1 to 2 resonance, they were moved out here, and uh, this is why this gap exists, and it's cleared out. And then one might expect that there's a large peak here or something like this. But what can also happen is that if, um, if we have, for example, the Sun again the center, and here's Earth now, one, one possibility, and um, then there's Jupiter here, and here are the asteroids, that they are, and this is the orbit of the Earth, that the asteroid orbits become increasingly elliptical. And at some point, they might cross the Earth orbit or from some other planet, Mars or Venus or something like that. And if they cross the Earth orbit, they can collide with, uh, with Earth, and um, then they are apparently gone. Or they can collide with asteroids in the inner, uh, more, more inner part of the belt and collide with these, and they then are then stuck in a more inner orbit. And this is why they are cleared out from, from the, the orbits outside, something like the 1 to 2 resonance or so. And also, this is one of the processes that delivers uh, that deliver the meteorites to Earth. Small ones, but maybe if they are 10 kilometers or something in size and fall in, in Mexico, the Yucatan Peninsula, they might um, trigger mass extinction and even maybe this of the dinosaurs. And this is how the process works for the Kirkwood gaps.